So I've been working on this float conversion on my RT for a few months now. I bought a kit from Denmark. That's the controller right there, the FC2. I've had to install a relay, which is up underneath my power commander. I run a direct line from the positive battery terminal through a one amp fuse to supply juice to the relay. I have a trigger wire coming off a tap that comes off of the diagnostic port which I had installed previously for my uh, rear LED lights. So I tapped off of that to trigger the relay. And then the relay has a ground direct to the battery and then has the hot going up to the FC2 module. I haven't had any luck getting this thing to work yet. So right now I have my fuel pump pulled out and I've got my good fuel strip hooked up to it. I ran a good calibration on that fuel strip with no problem and I verified that it worked and then when I swap everything back to the FC2 I still don't get readings so today I'm just going to put this fuel strip in some fuel and verify that it's changing levels and working like it should and then hook the FC2 back up to it and see if anything's changed. Right now, I'll go ahead and get some gas and drop this thing down in it and take some readings. Uh, first, I've hooked up my GS911 Wi-Fi and I'm gonna go ahead and do an auto scan and save that just to show that there aren't any faults detected including the fuel strip. And I'll probably go ahead and do some live real-time monitoring on the fuel strip while I'm doing this and save some of those values to review them against good values. I printed out the auto scan, no faults. I've got a five gallon container of gas and I've got the end of the fuel strip barely in it right now. So we'll flip on the ignition. You can see that the last reading showed about an eighth of a tank, the flashing symbol. That was off of the FC2. Apparently you have to start the bike in order for this to update.
we got no change. Some change. Finally, we're up to a quarter of a tank. I'm going to try to drop it in a little further. See that it's gone up now. Getting closer to a half of the tank. Gonna run it in second gear a little bit. Calibrated. Uh, it's not really recalibrated the, the miles left yet. We'll run it in second gear a little longer and see if it recalibrates that like it should. This fuel strip seems to be working like it should. I'm going to go ahead and hook the GS911 back up to it right now and take some real-time readings and print those out. And then we'll come back and flip this over to the FC2. So I captured about five minutes of logging. Everything looked to be going good. You see that this thing's warmed up pretty good. Still shows basically the same levels. I did another auto scan and no fault codes. Nothing's changed out here, so now I'm going to turn the bike off, flip everything back to the FC2, see if I get any readings. So once we turn it off, 
we're not going to turn it back on until we have the FC2 hooked up. If you happen to disconnect the fuel strip and turn the ignition on for any reason, it'll throw the air for a bad fuel strip and then you'll have to calibrate again. So we're not going to do that. We'll leave the bike off, hook up the FC2 like it should be, and then check and see what kind of readings we get. So you can see now I've connected the float back up inside the tank. The float's attached to the fuel pump. It's only got two conductors on it, two middle pins. So no longer do you have four wires connected to this. You only really have two coming from underneath. And I've made an adapter where I can take resistance readings and that tells me whether or not the floats working I just bought a four pin plug that would fit and Narrowed it down to just the two pins I needed, did some grinding on it, and I just take uh, resistance readings now with my meter. I'll hook it up and I'll show you what I mean. So right now, <clears throat> with the fuel pump pretty close down to the gasket, I have a reading of 120 ohms. The way that float works, I measured it before I installed it. Full empty when the floats as far down in the tank as it'll go. It measured about 190 in my tank. It won't go to the very bottom of the tank. It's almost got about a gallon left because it hits the side of the tank. And the only way to fix that is to do a lot of bending on the float. I did a little, but I didn't want to do a lot. I was fine with it just having a gallon left when it told me that it was fairly empty. I would consider that reserved, no problem. And then as the float rises up the tank to the full position, it goes to about 60 ohms. So the full travel of the float will go from 60 to about 300. 300 when it's all the way down, 60 when it's all the way up. So as you raise it, we should be able to see this change. When I raise the pump, it's going to cause the float to drop so this should increase from 120. So we'll pull this up and it's jiggled loose obviously. I had to mess with the connection some. So now we're at about 136. I've got it raised up. And I'm going to let it go down. And you see that it's gone to 120 where it was before. So 120, raise it up, 140, 150, drop it down, 120. 
So that tells us that the float's working inside the tank because the resistance is changing. So now I've hooked the FC2 back up to it. You can see that the harness that used to go into the top of the fuel pump now goes into the FC2. It has the wire that goes to the top of the fuel pump now, which just gets the readings from the float inside. And the main wire that goes back to the battery and the relay that I installed for the power. So the pump itself is just resting on the gasket now. There's plenty of gas in this bike. There's uh, approximately over a half of a tank. I'd say about two-thirds of a tank now. I know there's at least four gallons in it. Three and a half to four gallons, we'll say. So it's a seven-gallon tank, so a little over half. I'm going to fire the bike up, run it in second gear, see what the gauge reads. Everything's hooked up. I haven't turned the bike on since I've been messing with it. And we'll continue in just a second. So here you can see the auto scan that I saved before at 1.25 p.m. The real-time logs that I saved, uh, 1.31 p.m., the auto scan. After I was done, 1.32 p.m., the auto scan report, the first one at 1.25. No fault codes, no fault codes, no fault codes, no fault codes. On the ZFE high, no fault codes, and you can see film type fuel sensor. If it needed calibration or if it wasn't present, you have fault codes, it would tell you something. Here's the 132 when I was done. No fault codes. No fault codes, no fault codes, no fault codes. ZFE high, no fault codes, film type fuel sensor. Here's the actual real time readings. You can see uh, as the time increases, time on the left. The next readings are fuel strip heater current. When it's cycled on and it's heating up, that's running about 168. Fuel strip heater voltage is the next one. See it's one volt right now. Fuel sense voltage is always zero. I'm told that ha has to do with a float, if you've got a BMW float. Film sensor heating is a percentage. The last value, 56% seems to be what it, mine runs at when it's on. So you can track it over time. It cycles off. see the percentage is zero. Uh, it's down to 0.08 voltage with a reading of what about 3.1. It cycles back on. Pretty much the same readings 168, 1 volt, 56%. Cycles down. Back up. So, ZFV appears to be telling the fuel strip what to do, like it should. The fuel strip appears to be heating up. Uh, that's when it takes its readings, and that's when it can update the display. So, as far as 
the fuel strip itself. It's a good fuel strip. It calibrates fine. Its real-time values are fine. And it changes the fuel gauge like it should in the display. According to the float manufacturer, if the fuel strip is properly calibrated, the float should work with no problems, but it doesn't. So with the float reattached and the FC2 attached, you can see that the reading has gone back down to where the float was originally. I'll run it in second gear for a while to see if it updates. Cycle it off. Cycle it back on one time. And no change. The gauge should be up to around a half a tank, like I said, at least a little over half a tank, so uh, it doesn't appear to be working. I raised the fuel pump up. I would have dropped the gauge down, like I showed you before. See, the reading is still the same. I run it in second gear a little longer to see if it changes.
change. We'll cycle it off and on one time. And pretty much no change. So it does not appear to be updating the gauge like it should. I'll drop this back down for the time being and that's it for now.